Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and I'd like to welcome you to our worship service for this, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, in the year of our Lord, 2023. The theme for our service and sermon today is, When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 65 in the ESV is our psalm for today. Those of you in the internet world are welcome to take a break now, hit pause, find it in your Bible, and then follow along. This will be spoken in unison by those able to worship with us in person. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Our opening song this morning is Beautiful Savior All My Days. Help 
Let us confess our sins in the sure and confident hope that our Father in heaven invites us to boldly approach his throne of grace through Christ Jesus our Lord. Dear God, your law convicts us of our sins and shows us that we cannot save ourselves. We are truly sorry for all our sins and iniquities with which we have ever offended you. Forgive us for Christ's sake. Amen. On the basis of this, your confession, in the stead of and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth. We respond to God's gracious absolution of our sins by praising him and singing, How Can I Keep From Singing?
our Old Testament lesson for today, is Isaiah 55, verses 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon song this morning is Joy to the World. Cheers. 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions, is the theme for our sermon this morning. When iniquities prevail against me, God knows what is a sin, whether that's a sin of commission, a sin of omission. All of us are somewhat familiar with the idea of sins of omission. In our courtrooms, we ask that people tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And so, if you happen to know the whole truth and you don't tell it, that would be a sin of omission. A sin of commission would be stepping across the line. If you think of trespassing and our trespassing against the law, where God has clearly established boundary lines and forbidden us to go any further, for example, in the area of his good and wonderful gift of human sexuality, in the bounds of one man, one woman marriage. There are numerous examples in the Bible where people overstepped that bound and trespassed against the Lord. And in so doing, the iniquity of their sin bore witness against them. I don't know what your favorite sins happen to be. And sometimes, I'm not even that sure of my own favorite sins. But I do know that God's law sternly condemns all of us. And sometimes we get the impression that the Old Testament God was a mean and even vengeful and sometimes nasty God. But the way of salvation in the Old Testament is exactly the same as the way of salvation in the New Testament. People in Abraham's day and King David's day and the day of the major and minor prophets were saved by trusting in the promised Messiah who was to come. That is, they were saved by grace through faith as the precious seed of faith which God implanted in their hearts and souls grew through no effort of their own, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. God promises us in the Old Testament lesson for Isaiah that his word definitely accomplishes his purposes. And yet, we see in many passages in Scripture that God doesn't take delight in the death of anyone, even the wicked, yet he wants all to repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. That is his preferred will. And wherever God, the Holy Spirit, succeeds in creating saving faith in a human heart, all praise and glory go to God. And where the Holy Spirit is able to take that seed that we heard Jesus preaching about in the Gospel lesson and have it grow and flourish and produce fruit and lead that believer to remain faithful unto death so that they receive the crown of life, God's gifts, God's calling, God's support get all praise and glory for the response of people like you and like me to the gospel. When he calls us to repent and we say, no, I'm not going to hear it. Don't even talk to the hand because not even my hand wants to listen to you. All the blame goes on the fallen, sinful human heart. You've probably heard my references to Ephesians 2, which is a very clear explanation of the deadness that we inherit from Adam and Eve. And so, just like Lazarus in the tomb, we don't have the ability to get up on our own and decide for ourselves to follow Jesus. All we can do is decide various levels of civil righteousness, whether we want to be nice people or not. But the sower, Jesus, is willing to throw out the seed of the gospel lavishly and abundantly all over the place 
in a way that a parsimonious slash cheap person like myself would never do with grass seed that I'm paying for because I know that the grass seed, even though here in the church parking lot, seems to do great in the cracks between the asphalt, grass seed is really meant to thrive in rich loam, not asphalt or concrete. But God, in his grace and his mercy, what's he doing? What do we hear in the psalm? Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed, O you who hear prayer. To you all flesh come, when iniquities prevail against me as an individual, you atone for our transgressions. How do you know God loves you? John 3.16, if you look at that, it doesn't say God loves you individually, but God so loved the world the whole wide world. And because he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not be tortured by their iniquities. They have the calling of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have the power from the Holy Spirit to respond to that calling. And God's calling is faithful. He atones for our transgressions and calls for us to be gathered together in community as brothers and sisters in Christ, members of the body of Christ, living as St. Paul would warn us in the epistle lesson, not for the flesh, for that leads and returns to death, the death from which Christ called us, but we live through the power of the Holy Spirit, justifying us by applying Christ's salvation to us in conversion and by gifting us with works of sanctification as well, through which he draws us closer and closer to the will of God, even though St. Paul went to great depths and explained in Romans 7, we're not gonna be perfect in this life and it will be a struggle and sometimes that struggle will look like failure. But our God, this God of grace, this God of hope, the Psalm for today says in verse five, awesome deeds, a God of righteousness, the God of our salvation. This God is not only lavish in spreading the seed of the gospel initially, but as we make great emphasis of it in the church, he wants all members of Christ's body to get into the word, to read not just the law or the historical parts or our favorite little snippets out of context, but he wants us to read God's word to mark it, to learn it, to inwardly digest it, to feast on it so that we grow and flourish because there will be times when we can see God's word coming down from heaven and we can scratch our heads and say, he promised in Isaiah that his word doesn't return to him void, but I've been sharing and I've been sharing and I've been sharing and I want to see results. In fact, I want to see results in seven minutes or less. We live in a time where advertisements are measured in nanoseconds, where people have less patience in our country than ever before. And while God wants us to sow the seed of the gospel and to share it with as many people as we possibly can, we want results immediately and we want them to be obvious and to go from that little seed of the gospel to a full-blown redwood tree producing enormous fruit overnight. And God tells us that as believers, as those 
who have received that seed, maybe a hundred seeds, maybe a thousand seeds that the Holy Spirit inspired people to throw our way before they finally took root. We should be patient. We should be lavish and generous with supporting gospel ministry in and through our local congregation to reach out to our communities, regions, and yes, even the world with missions and missionaries and Bible translation work. And we should trust that the God who promises that his word will never come back void, but that it'll always provide either a blessing to the one who pronounces it. Remember Jesus with the people who are thinking about shaking off the dust of their feet against villages that didn't receive the message, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you greet a home with peace and they don't receive it, then the shalom will come back to you, the peace of God, even though that will not look like the theologians of glory who almost always turn God's blessing into something that they can monetize to catch the itching and trembling ears of people with rocky soil. You and I have heard the word of God. We have been called by our Lord and Savior. He is reminding us each and every day through the gospel that when our iniquities prevail against us, he atones for our transgressions. Same loving verse from the psalm speaking to the Old Testament people speaks to us. The same promise that God gave through Isaiah that his word does not return void or empty or meaningless and fleeting as breath. And the same Lord was willing to cast and scatter seeds across this whole world so that they would reach our hearts, invites us to take part, not just receiving all the time and hanging on and holding to ourselves like a squirrel stuffing our cheeks getting ready for a long cold winter, but receive the gospel, receive Christ's comfort the promise that your transgressions are taken care of in the cross of Christ who died to save all, even those who would reject him, and share the good news of Jesus. For that gives us the peace of God which is beyond all human understanding, and it guards and keeps our hearts and minds in and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. Merciful God in heaven, you take no delight in the death of the wicked, but want all to repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. This is true for your Old Testament people, as you say in Ezekiel 33, 11, and your New Testament people, as you remind us in 2 Peter 3, 9 and Titus 2, 11. Thank you for generously sowing the gospel seed into our hearts, that we may receive your grace by faith. Help us lavishly, abundantly, and generously share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our fallen world. Give world leaders wisdom and courage to know and to do what is right in these challenging times. Please stop the wars, famine, illnesses, murders, injustice, and bold-faced depravity plaguing our land and our world, especially the horrendous evils of modern-day slavery and human trafficking. Help the people of Haiti and those around the world, including those in the United States hit by natural disasters and man-made disasters as well. We pray for those that we name in our hearts that you would grant them healing according to your good and gracious will. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing song today is, Here I Am, Lord. <laughs>